Utan. Merci. The new in progress. Kwa nyende hapa kwa homu? No! Mwena posha hindi kukwe na likuwe bright. Mburu kwa ni ina take how long? Mwukile ingine. Mwena chikuja hapa. Masina njona ndiyo hii. Take time now, you know, Jana. There's a meeting in progress. Kula mali ni the end up and you can let up a video can you measure? participant ndio 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 Good morning and um, welcome to our lesson today. And uh, this lesson uh, basically was meant to help us to be able to see or to be able to share the different challenges that we are having as we study this unit, okay? So that was uh, the main intention of calling for this uh, uh, forum for us to be able to share ideas, to be able to help each other, share our challenges so that we're able to see where we can help, okay? Otherwise, I hope uh, you guys are very well and that uh, you're keeping yourself safe, yeah? So basically... Uh, we were supposed to do something called shorthand, yeah, and I hope uh, so far we are well, even as we continue to, you know, study this particular unit, okay? So we have uh, 
two groups in, I think we've got three groups in this um, forum. We've got uh, beginners, we've got people who have uh, actually been uh, continuing. That is a group of, uh, the beginner is uh, Phoebe, then we've got um, others who have been there, Ruth, uh, Irene, Diana, okay. Then, uh, and Catherine, Muya, and uh, who else? Then I think uh, Matida will be joining us uh, very soon. Then we have somebody who is doing also her advanced uh, uh, speeds, yeah? And uh, she's called Lillian. So basically this is a group uh, that has got uh, three different, uh, you know, uh, categories of students at different levels of their study for shorthand. So basically I called for this meeting just for us to be able to share, see what we should do, see areas where we need or would seek help, yeah, try to adjust so that at the end of it all, yeah, it is, it's, it's all about our students, okay? So basically what I'll do, I'll just go to the intro part of what I wanted to do during this session, okay? Uh, first and foremost, yeah, I, I, I hope by now, because I think I was able to explain this to somebody called uh, Phoebe, but I hope by now you know what is expected of a shorthand exam. Yeah, you know what happens. Yeah, like for example, uh, in a shorthand exam, I have a passage, yeah, Sorry, I have to get my book from here. I have a passage. Yes, I have a passage for different, I mean, for the speed that I'm supposed to read. For example, if I'm reading 60 words per minute, I have a speed for 60 words a minute. Remember we said, when, how do we calculate these speeds? Yeah, so if you're doing 60 words a minute, it means the words that I'm supposed to read is 180 words. So out of these 180 words, I'm supposed to read them in three minutes, okay? But even before we get there, what happens in an exam, in a shorthand exam, is that there are normally three passages, okay? There are three passages. We've got a warm-up passage, yeah? A warm-up passage, this comes at the beginning, yeah? We've got a warm-up passage, which is normally dictated within two minutes, yeah? And in most cases, it normally has like 160 to 180 watts. So when you divide that by two, it's around 80 to 90 watts per minute. And remember we said, when you are done with reading or when you're done with taking dictation for the warm up, that passage is normally crossed out. You cross it, yeah, with a pencil. Why do you do this? You do this because you don't want the person who will be marking your exam to confuse that as an actual passage. That's why it is a warm up. You're trying to warm up. You're trying to push your speed so that when you are now taking the accurate or the actual speed of 60 watts per minute, you have done some exercise. It's trying to push you. That's why we call it a warm up. Just like even when uh, you're doing athletes, yeah? You know, people normally warm up, jog a little bit, yeah? Try to run here and there just to try and gauge their speed. 
That's the essence of a warm up in shorthand. So we normally have three passages. One passage is a warm up. And this warm up is normally read at a higher speed. Okay. Now, remember, we also said you will be given some sheets, yeah, some small sheets that look like the shorthand notebook that I've always told you about. Yeah. And now these two sheets, you have to put a margin on one side and a margin on the other side. Okay. So what is that margin used for? So, for example, when I'm giving you the dictation, yeah, uh, the first warm up, after the warm up, you will now be required to do the first passage, passage one. Now, remember, passage one, we said it has 180 words, which are read in three minutes to make it. 60 words per minute. If you're doing 80 words a minute, it means the words will be 240 words read in three minutes to make it 80. If you're doing 100 words, it means the words to be dictated are 300 words to be dictated in three minutes to give it a hundred words per minute. Okay, so that's how we do it. So when you go to the second passage, remember, I will have written on the board. I'll have written passage one, for example, is about a letter of advice to a new employee. So that passage, Passage one and passage two will have been written on the board. Now, those two passages, you don't need to write them in shorthand. You write them in longhand on your, on your shorthand notes. You know, that cast slip that you'll be given, eh? you will write that there. Okay? So when I start, taking the dictation or when I start giving the dictation, I normally use a stopwatch. Why do I need to use a stopwatch? Because this is a timed speed. I cannot go beyond, yeah? If I'm supposed to read in three minutes, I'm supposed to read in three minutes, okay? And take notes. When we are giving this dictation, there is normally an invigilator who also has got the stopwatch and they also have a copy of what I am reading to you. So they know what I am reading. Okay. And they also have a stopwatch to make sure that if I'm supposed to spend three minutes or two minutes on a warm up, I spend exactly two minutes. If I'm supposed to spend three minutes on a passage, I should not go beyond the three minutes. So once I've given the dictation for the first passage, I will give you an allowance for you to be able to go through your notes, okay? Not to translate, to go through, to read them again. Remember that shorthand slip that you have been given, you're supposed to create a margin on this side and another margin on this side. Now, when you're going through your notes, I'll have given you three minutes. So for example, when you go through your notes and you realize that you wrote the wrong outline. Remember in shorthand, we don't rub. So what do we do? You will circle 
after you circle that, okay, after you circle that, on the same side, on the same line, on the right margin, you indicate the correct outline. That's why you have to leave a margin on this side and on this side for you to be able to write the correct outlines after you have gone through your notes. Okay? So that is very, very important for you to know that. So I will give you three minutes. Okay? So once the three minutes are done, you will take your new slip, your new shorthand slip that these are normally given by Kenya National Examination Council. So you take your next slip, which you had written the title for the second passage. Yeah. And the second passage, uh, please remember the first, the two passages that are dictated in shorthand the first one is always a letter, okay? The first one must be a letter. So it will start with, dear Mr. Kamau, dear Simon, dear Peter. Or sometimes they would give a local name. Yeah, like dear Mr. Mwangi, you know, Mr. Mwangi, Mwangi is not in shorthand because that's a local name, but they want to see, are you able to capture the sounds? Yeah, mwa, yeah, there's M, there's wa, gi, yeah, there's a gi, yeah, or a gay. Okay, so it doesn't have to be an English word. But bottom line is the first passage for all speeds, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, up to whatever speed, the first passage is always a letter. Now, after I've given you three minutes, you will now go to the next passage, which in most cases is normally a manuscript. Now, I am sure when you people are doing your uh, CDP, you will be taught how to type manuscripts. Okay. Now, the second passage in shorthand is a manuscript. Okay. So, I'll also take the same uh, three minutes to read for you that dictation. Yeah. And after I am done, I will uh, give you another three minutes for you to be able to go through your notes and for you to make sure in case there's a, an error, there's a wrong word, you circle it and you write it at the margin, but on the same line where that outline is. Okay, so I will give you three minutes. So after those three minutes, the next thing that I will do is, uh, is uh, now after you're done now, this is now where you'll be allowed to type, okay? Remember in shorthand, the notes are normally typed. Yeah, so by that time, you should be having your index number, yeah, which you'll have indicated, your full names, etc. So this document is normally typed. And now when we are typing this document, we don't have so much of a restriction because what we do, we only require you to set your line spacing to 1.115. That's it spacing from between this line to this line, it's 1.115 and times 12 
Roman. Okay? Yeah, Times New Roman 12. That's the size of the font. So this one, you will have done that before you start the passage. So remember, you shall be typing. This, if these are your notes, if these are your notes, you'll put your notes here. And you will be typing as you look through your notes. And you're given 45 minutes. Yeah, 45 minutes for 60 words per minute, you're given 55 minutes for 80 and 65 minutes for 100 watts. So that is to type both passages. So that's why your speed, yeah, your speed in typing is equally very very important okay and also your accuracy yeah in terms of your shorthand notes okay so after the 45 minutes you're supposed to stop typing so after you've stopped typing uh, we'll come collect uh, your work from your machine with a flash disk and take it for printing. Okay, so when we bring you back your copy, you shall attach. So you shall start with your warm up. Your warm up comes on top. And remember, we had said your warm up, you need to cross it, cross that page so that it is not marked. Otherwise, most students make a mistake of leaving the warm-up without crossing it. And remember, these examiners, sometimes they would assume that is a passage. So when they read the first sentence and realize it does not go with what the first passage had said, they will definitely mark you wrong. So make sure you cross it. So the warm up is normally the first sleep. And remember, the warm up, you don't translate the warm up. Okay? You don't translate the warm up. You only translate passage one and passage two. Those are the only ones that you translate. So you have the warm up. Then the second note will be your passage one and the printed copy of passage one. Now that is the translated notes. And then the third one will be your notes for passage two. When I talk about notes, I'm referring to the shorthand notes. And now behind those notes will be the translated copy of the passage two. So those are stapled together and put in your booklet that will have been given by Kenya National Examination Council, which will have your name, your center number, your unit, in, if it is shorthand, you need to know what are the exam codes for all the units. Okay? Yeah, so if it is shorthand, it is 1901, yeah, 101. So you need to master these codes. They are very, very important for you. So also in shorthand, they look for certain errors, you know. The pass mark for shorthand is 35%. That is what we call a pass. Okay, so for you to have a pass seven or a pass eight, if you're doing single and group, it is a seven or an eight. 
if you're doing a diploma, the pass mark is a bit high. Yeah, because, you know, diplomas do something called a modular system. So also the way they mark the exam is a little bit, a bit strict. Okay, so for the pass mark for either diploma, single and group, any speed, 60, 80, 100 is 35%. That is the pass mark. But what are some of the errors they look for? Yeah, what are some of the errors? Yeah, remember we said in shorthand, especially in passage, I mean, in 60 words a minute, the passage constitute of 90% of short forms. That's why you hear me telling you that short forms, you must master them, memorize them because they cover a certain percentage, especially in the letter. The first passage which you said is a letter. Then they look for other, and you know, for short forms, if you write the wrong short form, wrongly, you know, if you write the short form wrongly, you're penalized heavily, heavily. So the short form needs to be on the correct position and it needs to be the correct outline. And remember, you know, we said short forms, we don't put vowels. Yeah. Then they look for other mistakes like, uh, uh, and you know, they normally read your notes, your shorter notes and what you have transcribed or your longhand notes so they look through yeah and they also look through your translated notes so they have very many errors or many um they have a marking scheme on what guides them on how to award the marks which I will plan to share with you because this is very, very important for you to know the kind of errors you need to avoid in shorthand so that you should be able to pass that exam. So the essence of this video was to take you through what to expect in a shorthand exam. This is important for either if you're a beginner if you're a continuing student, and even for some of us who are doing advanced speed. So I will share with you the marking scheme for the errors that they look for in shorthand. Otherwise, I want to take this opportunity to wish you guys a very good day. Thank you.